A lot of you guys must have seen my previous videos wherein I have made a lot of projects, be it the Vikram lander miniature alarm clock or the LVM3 rocket which can actually be launched like a sugar rocket motor. Well, for making all of those projects, I have used a 3D printer. And hence, in this video, I'm going to discuss the best budget 3D printer for you as an hobbyist so that you can also make projects of your own. Well, about four months ago, I bought Creality's Ender 3 V2 Neo from Wall 3D here in India. That particular printer cost me about 24,000 rupees and it was a decent purchase considering its cost. While the basic Ender 3 costs about 13 to 14,000 currently, this particular printer has got an increased cost of 10,000 because of the various features that are added into the printer. But well, last month something interesting happened. Creality released its Ender 3 V3 SE 3D printer and this printer is being sold currently in India by Wall 3D. So I approached them and got this particular printer from them. And I think that this is going to be one of the best budget 3D printers for any of you hobbyists. Because this particular printer costs the same amount as the Ender 3 V2 Neo, that is 24,000 currently. And by the time this video gets uploaded, the prices might have dropped even more. So make sure to check out the printer from the link given in the description. So overall, this printer costs the same amount that is about 24,000, but it has got a lot more features. For example, the Ender 3 V2 Neo had an extruder mechanism which sits on the gantry itself. Whereas in the Ender 3 V3 SE, we have got a direct extruder system. Though this direct drive extruder system might not look like something very good, but it is a very important feature and a must have for new 3D printers. Because well, it saves you a lot of money and time. The second good thing about this printer is that it has got a completely automatic leveling system. Not unlike the Ender 3 V2 Neo, wherein you actually need to take a newspaper and align all the four points every single time. But in this printer, no need to do any of the leveling by yourself the printer will do everything by itself complete auto leveling and that is possible because it has got a load cell over here right here is a load cell which actually gives the auto leveling feature to the printer and the feedback from the load cell by pressing of the CR touch is measured to in turn level the entire printer both of these features definitely make it worth it for the 24,000 price point and so now let's just start with the unboxing of this printer First of all, I opened the entire packaging because the printer was secured very nicely and after you open the main box, you will be able to see a foam padding. Once you remove the padding, you will be able to see all the components inside, which are the stickers, some very essential components which will be needed for the assembly of the printer, the manual, the warranty card, etc. After this, you will see the display and other accessories with the printer. Once you open this particular layer and keep it aside, you will be able to see the actual printer which consists of the gantry system which I'll keep aside for now and this is the base. So I kept the base securely on a stable table. Over here you can see the branding of wall 3 on this printer because they are the reseller of the Creality's printers here in India. And now it is time to attach the gantry system. This entire system is very easy in the Ender 3 V3 system unlike the Ender 3's or other printers. Simply place this entire gantry on top over these holes and after that you will need some screws for the attachments. Over here you can already see that the printer has got great looks. And this particular magnetic bed leveling system is also perfect. Looks great and will last much longer than the normal ones. As mentioned previously, you will get all of these equipments necessary to assemble the entire printer. Remember that you will not even need a single extra power tool from what is given in the package. So everything over here is more than enough. First of all, I'll rotate the printer like this and then I'll attach these screws over here to secure the gantry with the base. Once this is done, as you can see over here, now it's time to attach this ribbon cable. Now this is another upgrade in the V3 SE. I think that the entire V3 SE design has been given much thought because the V2 Neo 3D printer had a lot of GST connectors and these connectors were needed to be connected to all the stepper motors individually. But in this particular V3 SE 3D printer, it's a single 24 pin connection which needs to be made directly over here, just above the extruder or the direct drive extruder. And once you do that, all the connections are complete. Now the only thing that remains is to connect this particular X label JST connector to the stepper right here. Once this is done, you are all good to go. So after this, I attach the spool holder which goes right over here in the middle because this is the direct drive extruder. And once you have made sure that this is secured nicely, it is now time to attach the display. So these are the three screws which go right here. And once the display is connected in the right location, it is now time to connect this particular jumpers I struggled a little bit over here because I was not able to see the part below the printer but once this is done it will be firm and in its place permanently. After this I secured the 24 pin wire which goes on the direct drive extruder safely with the help of this particular bracket. It also comes with its screws and all of these screws have been kept in separate packets so you will not have any confusion in the assembly itself. Once all of this is done, it is now time to look up at the SMPS system. 
Over here, you are supposed to be very careful because, well, this is a variable power SMPS. If your particular household has got a 110 volt supply, say you are in the USA or in Europe, then you might be having a 110 volt supply. But over here in India, the supply will be 220 volts. So this particular SMPS should be switched to the 220 or the 230 mode. These small details is where selecting the right supplier is very important because wall 3D makes sure that it makes appropriate changes to the printers suitable to the specific locations in which they are selling those. For example, there are a lot of sellers which simply import the part from China and directly dump it to you. And that is the exact reason they are able to reduce the prices because they do not add any efforts inside that. But doing that could be very disastrous for you because well, if you power the system at 110 volts here at 1220 volt AC, then you will destroy your entire printer. So please make sure to buy your 3D printer from an established and good seller who actually has got some experience into selling such equipments. One of the Ender 3 V2 Neo that I bought was from Wall 3D. The first Ender 3 V2 Neo 3D printer that I bought was from another seller and that seller gave me this wire with my 3D printer. Well, this wire is not suitable for Indian household plugs because the earthing connection will not be made and that could actually damage your printer. So please make sure to use the appropriate sockets with the printer and go for verified sellers only because they know what they're doing, they know what they're selling. So after that, I bought another printer which is the Ender 3 V2 Neo from Wall 3D and then here is the Ender 3 V3 SE. So now it's time to power up the printer by attaching the power cable. Once this is done, you can switch on the power and you will see the LCD display powering on. Over here in the interface, it's quite simple, very much similar to the V2 Neo, the print, prepare, control and leveling buttons. The knob that you get below that is a push knob. So you can rotate the knob clockwise and counterclockwise to move through the entire menu and you can push on the knob to select a particular option. So it's quite handy and a very useful design. Now it's time to get the free filament that you get from the Ender 3 V3 SE box, open it up and load it up into the 3D printer. Just make sure to hook it on this particular spool holder and then press this button over here to push the filament through the spur gear mechanism. Once this is done, it is time to move on the auto leveling section. Select the auto leveling option on your 3D printer and after doing that, the printer will do everything automatically. The printer will now automatically level itself with respect to the bed and it will plot the leveling difference or leveling offset for each and every point across the 3D printer. There are about 16 such points which are mapped which gives a good enough resolution or accuracy in printing with this particular 3D printer. Once this is done, you are simply supposed to click on the confirm button and now it comes the time to enter the SD card. You will find a full size SD card in this particular 3D printer with it and an SD card reader as well. The SD card has been already flashed with G codes for two files along with some instructions which you can access from your computer. So insert the SD card right over here and after that go to the print section. In the print section you will find the CAD G code. Simply click on it and then click on the confirm option. Once you click on the confirm option the printer is good to go and print everything very nicely. And after only one and a half hour here are the results. This is the CAD printed by the Ender 3 V3 SE and I'll have to agree that the details are amazing. The best part of this 3D printer was that it has got insanely high speeds in comparison to the V2 Neo. On average, the Ender 3 V3 SE runs at the speeds of about 180 mm per second. In comparison to that, the Ender 3 V2 Neo runs at about 50 mm per second for a decent accuracy. And that's not the limitation for this printer. You can turn it to as high as 350 or 400 mm per second as well in the V3 SE. If you try that with the V2 Neo, well, good luck. You will have clogging issues because it has not got a direct drive extruder. It has got this dedicated extruder system which is not capable of pushing filament at these high rates. In comparison, the V3 SE's per gear mechanism is much faster and will give you better results every time. So that's another advantage. It saves you time and well, electricity in a way because you are able to print things faster without consuming a lot of your time and precious money. So overall, looking at this print results, I'm very much satisfied. And I can tell you that the next purchase of my 3D printer will not be an Ender 3 V2 Neo. It will definitely be an Ender 3 V3 SE itself or some printer like this, because this is definitely a budget 3D printer. It will be easy for you to print with this printer. And I'll definitely suggest you that if you have a higher budget range, if you can spend about five to 10,000 more than the normal budget, then definitely go for this particular 3D printer, because you can definitely buy an Ender 3 V3 system but that Ender 3 V3 will give you a lot of issues in future because you literally have to do leveling each and every time and print failures increase substantially. That will irritate you and will spoil your entire hobby mood 
and will make you throw the printer in some corner. So it is always better to spend a little bit more to get a good machine which will keep working and will help you continue through your hobby.